are the great pianists? That is the subject of the day on this musical podcast. I am Christopher Brent. I'm a piano teacher and music educator from Michigan here in the United States, and I love talking about music history and especially music history as it relates to the piano. So who are the great pianists? Who are these amazing, wonderful artists that we've heard over the years that have inspired us? Who are they? How do they get their sound? So what I'm going to do is focus on the pianists mainly in the 20th century and into the 21st century during the age of recorded sound, right? What makes them so special and who are they, right? We all agree that Beethoven and Mozart were amazing pianists, but I'm going to focus certainly more on the 20th century and the 21st century. So I'm going to focus on classical pianists. I might do another podcast talking about the great jazz pianists. That would be a fun subject, actually. So so this is for the classical enthusiasts, the classical piano enthusiasts. Um, so there's a list of great pianists I have in front of me, and there's so many of them. And if I miss any one in particular, which is easy to do, please leave it in the comments and I may do uh, another volume, volume two <laughs> on the on this subject because I can go on and on about this. I hope I can keep myself under control because I love talking about the great pianists. So there are several schools of thought on this, right? And I've kind of thought about it and I've divided it up into three categories. So there's the great pianists who are the romantic interpreters that we all love. That might be somebody like Vladimir Horowitz or Martha Argerich. Certainly two great pianists of the 20th century, and Martha Argerich is still doing her thing. She's still performing today. I believe she's in her 70s now. Um, so those would be in the romantic school, um, pianists who give emotional performances who are not afraid to take risks, who do hit wrong notes. We'll, we'll definitely say that, but it almost doesn't um, detract at all. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I, I was never bothered when Horowitz hit wrong notes for the most part. Uh, he did hit wrong notes uh, quite a bit, but he took risks and he found phrases and ideas inside the music and brought them out in a way that many other artists did not or really no other artists did so that would be the romantic school of thought then there's the scholarly pianist as i call them somebody in the scholarly school if you want to call it that would be somebody like alfred brendel maybe andre schiff those are pianists who we don't think of as romantic in style maybe more conservative in their approach to some extent but they definitely stylistically are all about applying methods that are very correct in terms of the composer. And they make the argument that that's the most important thing, right? And that's certainly the case. And then the other, the third category is really an amazing one. It's very unique. Um, and I think it's basically this fusion of scholarly work combined with the romantic approach you know the the question is is can you do that right and i've always thought you know you kind of have to go one direction or the other maybe if you give a scholarly performance it's going to end up being a little more conservative maybe if you want to do the romantic thing you might be taking some risks hit some wrong notes and but you might play with a lot of emotion and people like that um, but i think you can combine these two ideas and a, a pianist that comes to mind right away evgeny kissin does that he might favor the romantic end of things a little bit more uh, one of my favorite pianists today is a norwegian pianist named life ovi ansnes if i'm pronouncing it correctly i um i, I love his work uh, he is somebody i think who really does have a romantic approach but is amazingly good at giving a scholarly performance especially of works of grieg and other Scandinavian artists and 20th century artists that, or 20th century composers, I should say, that he's recorded. 
Um, so those come to mind right away. I, I have a list here of the great pianists, so to speak. Um, if, if we kind of go down the list here, uh, uh, let's see here. We have um, Vladimir Horowitz, definitely a romantic. Sviatoslav Richter, I would definitely put him in the romantic school. Um, he was absolutely incredible, especially as a Rachmaninoff um, interpreter. His Rachmaninoff second piano concerto is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Glenn Gould, he was a interpreter mostly of uh, Baroque and classical period music. He's really a um, kind of the definitive romantic Bach interpreter uh, in, in Mozart and Beethoven. So Glenn Gould, definitely in the um, romantic uh, school, if you want to call it that. Martha Argrich, yes, definitely in the romantic school. Claudio Arau, um, an amazing pianist. Um, I would, you know, put him in the romantic school there, but he did, um, you know, have a sense of scholarly understanding and a fabulous technique. Emil Galel is definitely in the romantic uh, end of things. I think Vladimir Eskenazi, as I'm looking at uh, this amazing list of pianists here. Eskenazi is absolutely amazing. Uh, he's really the premier Rachmaninoff guy, so to speak. Uh, his recordings of the Rachmaninoff concertos are basically thought of as being among the best. Um, I saw him perform actually as a conductor. Um, he's just a, an unbelievable musician. Um, and he's recorded, um, I believe, the complete works of Chopin, maybe the complete works of Brahms, too. Um, so it's definitely was somebody who specializes in the romantic literature, but he can play anything, of course. Um, he's one who definitely combines a romantic spirit with an understanding of the scholarly aspect. Alfred Brendel, definitely somebody who's scholarly, if you want to say it that way. Maybe a little conservative at times, but Brendel tends to uh, specialize, if you want to say, in uh, the classical period composers, uh, Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, and then maybe early romantics like Schubert. Um, and, and, and Schumann. Um, Murray Pariah, I put him in the scholarly school. Um, amazing pianist, without a doubt. Um, Christian Zimmermann, a Polish pianist, uh, he's in that category, I think, of somebody who can really play with the romantic spirit, but certainly has a sense of scholarly control over things, and, and he's a brilliant interpreter. Um, Polini, I would say he's a little bit more on the scholarly school. He has an amazing, unbelievable technique like no other. Um, I believe he performed or recorded the Chopin Etudes at a very young age and won the Chopin competition. Absolutely incredible musician. Um, Lang Lang, this is uh, more of the 21st century. Um, he's definitely of, <laughs> we'll say, the romantic spirit. Um, he's often criticized for having a lot of antics and stage presence and overdoing that end of it, but I think he has the technique to, to back it up. He has an amazing technique. You, there's no arguing that. Um, I don't have a problem with Long Long's uh, romantic approach and the antics, and if you want to call it that. I think he's matured with some of that over the years, and I think he will as he, as he grows. He's growing as a musician just like all of us are. Um, he's definitely one of the highest profile artists uh, of today as far as concert pianists are concerned. Um, some people just really think that um, what he does is maybe cheapening the art form. Um, I, I disagree. I think it's it's actually quite good what he's doing. Um, there's a lot of wonderful things that he's brought about in terms of musicality. That That is there. Um, sometimes, I, I do agree, maybe it's hard to see with some of the extra antics, um, but that brings in other people that might not normally be interested in classical music. So there's that aspect of things, and I think that's really important. Um, what's really amazing about all of this is all of these different artists have these different approaches, right? One's ro more romantic approach, one's more conservative, one's more scholarly. Uh, one might just have a different tone than another um, pianist. So we all interpret the same score in our own unique ways, and I think that's what helps make music go round, right? So 
I don't know why people argue so much when I'm on YouTube here. I scroll down and after I'm looking at a performance and everybody's fighting, right? Long Long's giving this wonderful performance. I scroll down in the comments and everybody's arguing about his uh, stage presence and, and this and that. And it's like, you know, it's, it's fine. He does this approach. This is his take. It's how he sees the work. It's what he believes in. And it works, you know. And if you don't think it works, then go listen to Alfred Brendel. Go listen to, you know, Mitsuko Uchida, who's a wonderful uh, Japanese pianist uh, of Mozart. Very, very scholarly and just unbelievably good. So then listen to, to her perform um, the work or somebody like that. It, you know, that's the thing. Um, there's a lot of... Um, debate about who is basically the best pianist and who's the best interpreter of this composer and that composer right um and you could you could argue about that all day um and go round and round and that's sometimes that's fun to do um another great pianist if i could go on and on and i will go on and on but <laughs> another great pianist of today is um jean-yves thibaudet is a french pianist uh, one of the best as far as french music goes because he's French, right? Um, he, I believe he recorded the complete works of Ravel and Debussy, and it's just second to none. Um, Michelangeli, another great pianist, especially when it comes to French music, he is definitely in the scholarly school, if you want to say it, kind of a maverick kind of guy, um, very good performer. If you're looking for um, some good literature on this, there's a book called The Great Pianists. I believe the author, his name is Harold C. Schoenberg. Um, that's the name that's coming to mind. That's a great book. There's another book out there called The Art of the Piano by David Duball. Um, that book is really good. It's well put together. He discuss, um, discusses um, composers and composers who were pianists, like Chopin and Liszt and all that. And then he has another section um, where he goes in depth uh, with all of these great pianists uh, that I'm talking about and gives um, sometimes just a few paragraphs. Sometimes he'll go in and give um, several pages on a certain artist, like Horowitz or uh, maybe... Um, uh, Rudolf Serkin or something, he'll give a lot of information. And if there's a slightly lesser known pianist, there might not be as much on that. But um, you can get a lot of knowledge from that book. It's really, really good. Um, another great pianist of today, Stephen Huff, um, looking at Marie Zhao Pires. She's an amazing interpreter of um, Baroque and classical works. Um, Angela Hewitt is another pianist I recently um, so she's incredible because she can just mass this unbelievable amount of repertoire. I, I don't know how she does it. I don't even know. It's like not even human. She has like the largest repertoire of anybody like ever. It's amazing. I saw her give a recital here in the Detroit area um, about two years ago. It, just amazing. Um, she is definitely in that scholarly school uh, when it comes to, to Bach. She's really one of the best Bach interpreters in the world. Um, so I'm sure I missed uh, many of the great pianists um, here. Um, so uh, I might do another volume on this or another podcast because I could just go on and on and on and on and just like not stop. Um, so uh, feel free to leave comments, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, and visit my website at www. ChristopherBrent.com, and if you have specific questions or ideas or maybe a podcast that you would like to hear, uh, by all means, um, my email address is chrisbrentmusic at gmail.com. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.